So I'm going to do some, some algebraic calculations to convince you that the product rule is, is what it is. The derivative of a product of two functions is the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. So here we go. Uh, theorem. Suppose that f of x and g of x are differentiable functions at a. Right, so I want them to be differentiable at a. I'm going to define a new function h of x, which will be the product of f and g. So h of x is f of x times g of x. And then this is also differentiable at a. And the derivative of this function at a is f prime of a times g of a plus f of a times g prime of a. Well, let's prove it by using the definition of derivative. So proof, I want to convince myself that the derivative of h is this. So the derivative of h at a, by definition, is the limit as x goes to a of h of x minus h of a over x minus a. Now I know what h is. h is the product of f and g, so I can plug that in. This is the limit as x goes to a of uh, f of x times g of x minus f of a times g of a all over x minus a. I just replaced h by its definition. h is the product of f and g. Now I'm trying to calculate this limit, right? What do I do? There's a little trick. I want to somehow end up by getting things that involve the derivatives of, of f and g. And right here, I can't, I can't split these apart. So I'm going to add and subtract something that will let me factor the, the numerator. Right? So I'm going to add uh, f of x times g of a and then subtract f of x times g of a. Right? And I'm adding and subtracting the same thing, so I haven't actually changed anything. But that will let me rearrange the, uh, the numerator. I'll rearrange the numerator so that it'll start out f of x, g of x, right? uh, minus f of x, g of a, right? plus f of x, g of a, minus f of a, g of a. Right, so I've just taken those four terms, one, two, three, four terms, and I've rearranged them down here. f of x, g of x minus f of x, g of a plus f of x, g of a minus f of a, g of a. And that's the numerator. The denominator is just x minus a. Now what do I do? Well, there's, there's some good news, right? I've got a common factor of f of x here. I've got a common factor of g of a here. So I can factor this. I'm going to erase the stuff on top here so I can uh, have a little bit more space. So I'm going to factor this. This is the limit of f of x times g of x minus g of a plus, and then here I've got a common factor of g of a, and f of x minus f of a. And the denominator is still x minus a. And this is the limit as x goes to a. OK, so I factored an f of x from the first two terms and a g of a from the last two terms. Right. And now I'm going to split this fraction up into two pieces. And you can already see how good things are happening. I've got g of x minus g of a over x minus a. That's going to give me a derivative of g. And I've got f of x minus f of a over x minus a. That will give me the derivative of f. So let's see. This will be the limit as x goes to a of f of x times g of x minus g of a over x minus a plus 
f of x minus f of a over x minus a times g of a. Now this is the limit of a sum, so it's the sum of the limits as long as the limits exist. So I can rewrite this as the limit as x goes to a of the first term, f of x times g of x minus g of a over x minus a plus the limit as x goes to a of f of x minus f of a over x minus a times g of a. As long as those two limits exist, they're equal to the limit of this sum. Now, how do I calculate these, these limits? I should put some more parentheses here. All right, how am I going to calculate these, these two limits? Well, they're both limits of products. And the limit of the product is a product of limits provided the limits exist. So this is the limit as x goes to a of f of x times the limit as x goes to a of this fraction plus the limit of this fraction times the limit of g of a. So now I've got four limits to do, but they're going to be easy limits to calculate at this point. And all four of these limits, they will exist. That will mean the limit of these two products exist. And both of these limits exist, so that means the limit of their sum exists. And that's the limit that I want to calculate in order to determine what the derivative of the product of f and g is. OK. Now, how do I calculate these four limits? Well, in some sense, this first limit is the trickiest, right? How do I know what the limit of f of x is as x goes to a? Right? Well, we know something about f. f is differentiable at a. And if it's differentiable at a, it's continuous at a, which means the limit of f of x as x goes to a is just f of a, because f is continuous because it's differentiable. So this first limit is just f of a. Now what's this next limit? This is the limit as x goes to a of g of x minus g of a over x minus a. That's the definition of derivative of g at the point a. And g is differentiable at a by our assumption. So this must be the derivative of g at a. What's this? Well, this is just the definition of derivative of f at a. And f's differentiable at a. So that's the derivative of f at a. And what's this? This is the limit as x goes to a just of g of a. Well, g of a doesn't have any x's in it. It's a constant as far as x is concerned. right? I wiggle x, nothing happens to g of a. This is just the limit of a constant, so it's just g of a. And there we go. This is the derivative of the product of f and g. right? It's the first thing times the derivative of the second plus the derivative of the first thing times, times the second. Right? And that's exactly what we wanted to show. And we did it just using the definition of derivative.